Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to unbox and test this Noctua NHC14S. I bought this at $79.45 which is more expensive than a basic Deepcool AK620. However, the key feature of this cooler is its low profile standing at just 115mm. What's interesting here is that you can place the fans both at the top and bottom of the heatsink. This also allows for dual fan configurations. And this raises the question of how much the fan positions affect its overall performance. Anyway, opening the box. Immediately, you'd see an accessory box. It contains a thermal paste, low noise adapter, extra fan clips, a Noctua badge, a screwdriver, and on the upper right side is for AM4 and AM5 mounting, and on the upper left side is for the LG A1700, 1200, and 115X mounting. Anyway, for AMD, there's a manual, standoffs, and mounting brackets. For Intel, there's also a manual, a bunch of standoffs and screws, another bunch of standoffs and screws, mounting brackets, and lastly, the Intel backplate. Underneath the cartel is the cooler. There's a plastic cover for the bottom of the cooler. And this is the cooler itself. As for testing, I'll be using the ASUS ROG Strix B650E-I. And the processor is a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D with a G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 32GB 6000 mega transfers CL30 RAM. So the first step here is to remove the mounting clips. But I have already taken them off, which is why you don't see them here. After that, you have to use these standoffs and screws from the cooler. My Initial thoughts on this is that the package is not resealable. I would have preferred a resealable packaging for easier safekeeping. Place the standoffs on top of the backplate holes, place the mounting brackets on top of the standoffs, and screw the backplate, standoff, and mounting brackets together. Once you have screwed both mounting brackets, you should apply the thermal paste. One great thing about Noctua's manual is that it includes a diagram for thermal paste application. For AM5, they suggest to have one big dot in the middle. And let's do that. As for the cooler, we need to remove the fan first. I also noticed that by default, the fan is blowing outwards, which is kind of unexpected. Anyway, align the cooler to the screws and use a screwdriver to tighten the screws three turns at a time. Midway, make sure that the screws are properly mounted on both sides and then proceed to tighten. After mounting the cooler, I noticed that there is a bit of excess. If your case has the PSU mounted beside the motherboard, make sure that it is positioned slightly lower than the cooler. For this demo, I'll start with the low profile exhaust mode but I've tested every possible fan configuration I could think of. Looking at my RAM, the fan clearance is just right allowing it to spin without hitting the RAM. Finally, plug the fan into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And there you have it, it is installed. As for installation issues, the first thing to note is the 24 pin power connector. It can be difficult to plug. In. I suggest connecting the 24-pin power connector first before installing the fan at the bottom of the cooler. The top screw hole will also be inaccessible once the cooler is installed. So consider installing this cooler at the latter part of your build. As for the benchmarks, I tested this in 6 configurations. Basically a top fan, bottom fan, and dual fan config in exhaust and intake permutations. In Cinebench R23, the temps ranged from a high 89.51 degrees Celsius with the single intake fan at the top to a low 89.41 degrees Celsius with the single exhaust fan at the bottom. Across the board, there wasn't a huge variation with most configurations hovering around 89.4 degrees Celsius mark. However, compared to the Deepcool AK620 which recorded 84.77 degrees Celsius in the same benchmark, the NHC14S is about 4.6 degrees Celsius warmer, showing that the AK620 is more superior in cooling performance. In Cinebench R24, the temps varied across configurations, with the single exhaust fan at the top being the coolest at 85 5.35 degrees Celsius and the single exhaust fan at the bottom being the hottest at 88.11 degrees Celsius. By comparison, the Deepcool AK620 maintained a much lower temperature at 81.14 degrees Celsius. For FF15 at 1080p, the dual intake setup was the coolest at 70.08 degrees Celsius while the single exhaust at the bottom was the hottest at 75.37 degrees Celsius. This shows the intake setups generally perform better. In comparison, the Deepcool AK620 achieved a lower temperature of 69.22 degrees Celsius. For FF15 at 4K, the temps were slightly lowered as compared to the 1080p benchmark with the dual intake fan setup 
setup being the coolest at 68.7 degrees Celsius and the single exhaust fan at the bottom being the hottest at 74.41 degrees Celsius. This is likely due to the GPU taking on more load. As for Deepcool AK620, it performed slightly better at 68.48 degrees Celsius. As for my recommended fan config, I'd prioritize the dual intake fan config first. If you only have one fan, I recommend using a top intake fan config. And if you're aiming for a lower profile setup, I still suggest a bottom intake fan config. Overall, the NHC14S offers passable cooling performance in a compact 115mm tall design. This will fit well in some smaller cases. However, while compact, its 115mm height may still be too tall for many SFF cases. For maximum cooling performance, larger coolers or AIOs might be better. And it can also cause some clearance issues and may be tricky to install in certain setups. Additionally, my benchmarks are based on 7800X3D, a relatively easy to cool CPU. So the cooler may perform differently with hotter CPUs. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do let me know in the comments below on what you think of this cooler. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmarks. Bye!